Welcome back to Bloodborne the board game. Today we are going to be playing through chapter 2. I got a couple of really helpful comments on the first video that I have uh, read, checked out and they're, they're sort of in the detail on that but they will certainly help us and you know when we play through today make sure I get those rules absolutely spot on. So thank you very much those people who commented. I'm not going through the setup again if you'll recall from last time uh, I showed you how to set this up how where to put your your cards you know to be ready for the uh, for the game uh, I've shown you all of that in the first video in the first sort of 15 minutes uh, one thing I did miss in the first video is that when we achieved one of the missions we actually were given the hand lantern if you might recall the hand lantern hunters tool but we were also given Ludwig's rifle if we wish to use it. Now I carried on using the Hunter's pistol which is our starting firearm. I carried on using that in the uh, first game but today for a change I think we'll have a go at Ludwig's rifle. So if you see here it's quite straightforward whenever an enemy moves into your space you deal two damage to that enemy. It will reset when we go back to the Hunter's dream otherwise we'd have to discard two cards to refresh it. So we will start with that today and see how that goes. We are still with our hunter from last time, from the first video. The saw cleaver wielding hunter. Um, let's have a think. I tend to always start with his weapon on this side. I always think it, uh, I don't know, I just think it's a nice general mix of options. So we will put him on the central lamp tile. Now you'll notice this time that these four boards are already laid out, so let's explain what's going on. If we look at chapter 2 setup, and again I'm not going to go through all the details of, of how this works because I did that in the first video, but it does ask us to pull out certain named cards, as always, um, but in addition, and this we didn't have this with chapter 1, it asks us to look at the special rules card, card 17. So if I now come to card 17, before creating the tile deck, take the graveyard, tomb of Odin, and one random unused tile. And then we have to redraw, redraw the tile if it's not got at least two exits. So I've already set those up. We've got the graveyard over here on the right. We've got our central lamp, which starts every game. We have our random tile, which has definitely got uh, at least two. And then we have the tomb of Odin at the end. So those are, are pre-set up. Now the way I've read this is that this one random unused tile, I don't believe that that is one of the two random tiles that we select because it says we do this before creating the tile deck. So that's how I've interpreted that. I don't think it really matters too much. Um, if I've got that wrong, it's only one extra tile base that I have to worry about. So we have done exactly what it says in these special instructions. Connect the graveyard to the central lamp connect the random tile to the opposite side of the central lamp, then connect the tomb of Odeon to the random tile. All done, finished and ready to go. We will have the Huntsman's Minion, Hunter's Mob, Scourge Beast. I shuffled those again as always, made sure I got the random side. And now we can start chapter two. And the first thing we need to do is reveal card 18. Source of the Scourge. We have taken the first steps towards cleansing central Yarnum of the Scourge infestation, but our efforts have not gone unnoticed. The beasts have fled deeper into the district, and some seek to avoid us. Perhaps some bait can be used to lure them out. During their turn, hunters may discard one consumable to spawn one Scourge beast in their space. Each time you slay a Scourge beast, gain one corpse token. So, as we haven't seen a corpse token before, this is a corpse token. I didn't see it the first couple of times I looked at them, but if you look carefully, you'll see it's actually a, a small body. I think that's just the hand there, the head is up here, feet down there. Not the clearest, but anyway, that is a corpse token. So, each time we slay a Scourge Beast, we'll gain one corpse token, and then the hunters may discard the held tokens while on the graveyard tile, placing them on this card. And when this card has number of hunters plus one, so that's two corpse tokens on it, we will reveal card 19. So, there we go, our first part, the hunt mission. 
and off we go. No surprises here, let's get our first three cards in hand. Not much I need to do here, I'm simply going to move. I'm going to discard card and I'm going to move straight down the table like so into Odeon's chapel so that would be one I'll move finish my move there that's two now then if we remember on here always got to keep remembering to look at this I think I actually forgot to do this in the first game so let's see and the move on Yosefka's clinic no and the move on Odeon chapel yep we've absolutely done that so we go for card 29 let's have a look Odeon Chapel. As you approach the old chapel, the smell of warding incense fills your nose. You cautiously press on the large wooden doors. Now this is where the decisions you make in earlier chapters and earlier missions become important. So if you have the moment of mercy, reveal card 30. Now you may or may not remember, but the moment of mercy was the ending of one of the insight missions that we did last time uh, just I have it here they ask you to keep hold of these from you know one chapter to the next so you can remember this was where I allowed the girl to escape and flee to Odeon Chapel I did have the option of killing her so I have the moment of mercy card which means that we now know that we need to go to card 30 to continue this insight mission for Odeon Chapel so Let's go to card 30 and see what it says. Massacre at Odeon Chapel. The interior of the chapel lies covered with blood. Corpses litter the ground. At the centre, a figure lies hunched, feeding upon the remains. As it rises and turns to face you, you see it is garbed in the tattered clothes of the girl you chose to spare. Okay, looks like it was a mistake to spare her. Reveal card 31. Surround the Odeon Chapel tower with fog gates and spawn one female beast patient on the Odeon Chapel space. So here is a female beast patient. So we will put her on the lamp marking there. It respawns on that space on a reset. It is immune to the effect of the Odeon Chapel. So that means, if you remember, there's a bit of text on the card. It says, enemy attacks suffer minus one speed while on this tile. That's not going to affect her. Complete this mission by slaying this beast patient and then reveal card 30. So we need to reveal card 31 as well. Place two insight tokens on this card. If there are three or more hunters, place one additional token. When the beast patient would be slain, instead remove one token and heal all health from it. All tokens are returned on reset. Replace its special with the special on this card. Right, two insight tokens this time. Interesting, that's making it a bit harder. So we'll put those two tokens on. Now the interesting thing here is the setup for this, if you remember, Hunter's Mob, Hunter's Minion and Scourge Beast didn't mention a female beast patient. Well, I've grabbed the card out of the case. Here's the card, let's have a quick look. Basic, medium speed, two damage. We're replacing the special. If we remember, we're replacing it with a fast three damage and stun. And then we're keeping this ability Ash and Blood. If the Hunter's attack deals any damage, they must dodge or suffer that much damage and poison. Interesting. Oh, okay, I see. So both sides are the same except for the special, which is why they've replaced the special with that card. It doesn't matter which side of this we use. We, we are okay only three health which is nice we have moved into the chapel we have got our two cards remaining I don't want to expend one of these cards to move I would rather just keep well I'll keep them both because then I can do an attack and a dodge so I'll end my turn there she will activate and move into the space with me which means that my rifle will discharge doing her two damage she only has three now I will put down 
in here as part of the attack and draw a card. I've uh, picked up a stagger. Uh, clear this. Well, we already had to clear this spot. Let's see what she does. She does a special. Okay, let's have a look at the special. Speed three, so it's faster than me. With stun. If the beast patient is slain, the hunter must dodge that or suffer three. Well, um, I am going to dodge by putting this on here, which will also allow me to clear the space. So I'm going to dodge the damage. I'm going to do three damage to her, but if you remember, she has two insight tokens, so we haven't killed her. So this, this last bit here about if the beast patient is slain, it's not going to apply. But we are going to take off one of the two insight tokens, and that is the end of her attack on me. So now it's my turn, I've moved the time on one. I still have one card in my hand. I can now make this up to three. Oh, I might as well just use this to attack. We will go for a slash. Plus one is three damage. We need to see what she is going to do now. She is going to do another special. <laughs> have to keep lifting this up to remind myself. Right. Uh, she is going to get me this time because I don't have any dodge cards left. Luckily I have got uh, a card to discard because of the stun, so I'm not going to take any damage there. Uh, I will do the three damage to her, but she will do three damage to me first. So three damage to her means that she has lost the last insight token. So now we need to actually finish her off. I only have the one card left. We will just do this, which is a quick cut, speed three. The stagger doesn't do anything to help us out. Do I have, ah, I have my bloodstone shard, which I had forgotten. Place on an attack slot. May switch slot on transform while on slot that attack deals plus one. We will put it on this slot. So we'll do two damage, not enough to kill her, but enough to get her within one of dying. Um, let's see what she will do. She will do a basic attack. Her basic attack, just to remind everybody, is a speed two, two damage. Mine is going to hit first, so she will take two damage, but then she will hit me and I will take two damage. Now this could end very badly for me because now it's the end of my turn and it's her activation and I have got nothing to defend myself with. She will attack me now with a basic. Well, guess what? That's a speed two. I've got nothing to dodge it with. She does two damage. I've died. Already I have returned to the Hunter's Dream. I have no uh, blood echoes, so there's nothing I can do to renew myself. So I'll simply come back here and do what we need to do, which is take all the cards. We need to give those a good shuffle, if you remember. Now one of the things that was pointed out to me in the comments I received is that you actually get to draw your next three cards before choosing which side you wish to put your um, your weapons, you know, which, uh, which side of this card you want to have. So I'm going to take that advice. We can also choose where we want to put this this time, so I'll put it out of the way for now. Restock my health. Right, I am going to put it with the quick cut so that we'll get a plus one damage on a very fast attack. I'm going to pick my three cards. And then based on what I see of those three cards, I will decide whether I want this side or not. Well, do you know what? I'm quite happy to keep it on this side. I have to come back onto the board. You'll notice I didn't bother putting a broken lamp symbol on the lamp, but when the fog gates go up, that is one of the things that happens. Um, I just think it's unnecessary. I can remember that you can't use it. We will use this card, Leaping. So I will move through the fog gate. That's one and two in with this lady. I'm going to put it in the quick cut. So we'll do two damage, which is one more than we need. I'm hoping we should be okay. In fact, we should be fine because we've seen both specials already be exhausted. So not really any risk at all. 
Ability. Her ability, if a hunter's attack deals any damage, they must dodge at speed 3 or suffer that much damage and poison. Oh, wonderful. So, um, she is dead, which is great. So she is gone from the board and we get a blood echo. But, unfortunately, we did, how much damage did we do? Two, we suffer two damage. And because we can't dodge, we also get this poison, which I believe is this delightful purpley colored one with the skull in the teardrop there. Right, so we'll put that on. And for those of you who aren't aware what poison does, at the end of every turn that you have a poison toker on your card, you will suffer one damage. We remove it when we go to the dream or if we have a consumable that allows us to uh, discard it. So, we've killed her, we can get rid of the door fog as well. And now we need to decide what we're going to do next. Uh, we need to see what we turn over after we've killed her. Complete this mission by slaying the beast and reveal card 32. Card 32 says, price of weakness. I assume this is our weakness for allowing the girl to live. Distribute one consumable and the Carol Rune Formless Odeon reward amongst the hunters. We must take this as a lesson. Even the slightest hesitation in our duties can lead to disaster. Mercy is not an option we can afford on the hunt. Let's get those cards it just mentioned. Carol Rune Formless Odeon, there it is. Right, we're going to have to make a decision because this will give us three rune cards. We're only allowed two in our hand. Hunter turn, refresh your firearm. The Great One Odeon lacking form exists only in voice and is symbolised by this rune. I think that's a really good rune card. I would rather have this in my hand than the eye. So we will put that there and we will try and remember to use it. Put this other card aside. I may change my mind in a later chapter and switch back, but we will do that for now. And then we get one consumable, so I've already shuffled those well. And we've got the blood vial, which allows us to heal two in our hunter turn. And we have completed one insight mission. Excellent. That's the Odin Chapel mission finished. We now have two cards left still, so we've still got some of our turn. I'm going to use uh, a card, discard it here, and we'll move off to the right and see what we find. We find an alleyway. Okay. And the symbol on there is a scourge beast, so we need to put the scourge beast on here. And I have moved the one and the two. It's still the hunter's turn, so I'm going to expend my consumable. A blood vial and that allows me to heal two so back up to full strength or at least until this kicks in I'm going to move in one and I'm going to stop there because I'm going to use my rifle here to help me get um, some damage on this um, scourge beast so I'll, I will finish my hunter's turn then now I believe that that means I lose one now because it's the end of my turn. It's now activation for the enemy. Scourge Beast will move into my space and that will trigger my firearm, doing two damage to the Scourge Beast. Now, Scourge Beast is going to attack. I only need to do two more damage. I'm going to put this card here in slash, draw a card, which gives me a stagger. We will get a Scourge Beast basic attack Faster than mine, nothing I can do about that, can't dodge it. I'm going to take the two damage, can't be avoided. But, good news is, I am going to do my three damage. If you remember the Bloodstone Shard adds, uh, yeah, adds extra damage. So that beast is dead. Take it off the board. Another Blood Echo. Because of, this is one of the things we need to do, we need to kill Scourge Beasts and we need to collect their corpses. I need to put a corpse token next to my hunter and that token will now stay with us until we can get it to the graveyard where we're going to make our little bait trap. That was the enemy's turn over. It's now my turn. I will 
Then with the time on, restock my hand. Uh, this is good. We can use this um, this one when used for a non-attack action. Heal two. So I will move one, two, take my corpse with me, and heal two, which is great. So that is used, and I will refresh, Hunter term refresh your firearm, so I'll, I'll exhaust that for this go, and refresh my firearm. And I will use this card to move again. I'm going to move out to this side now, so let's see what the next tile is. Okay. Yosefa's Clinic. And I apologise if I'm not reading that the way everybody else would read it, but that's how I'm going to pronounce it. Right, I need to move my guy one. There's no monsters here, so... I'm going to move two, and we're in Yosefa's clinic now. I'm pretty sure I remember that being on our hunt card. Uh, end a move on Yosefa's clinic tile, reveal card 24. Insight mission. Yosefa's clinic. A soft voice addresses you. A hunter? I'm terribly sorry, but you may not enter. I am Yosefka. This is my clinic, and I cannot allow any chance of infection within, but I might be able to aid you. I am working on a cure for this terrible plague, but I require blood samples from those freshly infected. Will you assist me? So this says we have to slay a hunter mob, or huntsman's minion, while it is on the Osephus clinic tile. So we'd have to try and get one to follow us back. I will use this last card to go, I could use it to move, but bearing in mind that I need to get back to the central lamp quite quickly, I might as well just exhaust it to go to the Hunter's Dream, and then at least I'll be able to get rid of this poison token, I'll be able to exchange my blood echoes and, and reset and get everything ready for the next go. So that's what I'm gonna do. Reset, reset that. Blood echoes, let's take a look at what we can choose over here. Now that I've been poisoned once I see how useful it might be to have these uh, poison cards so I'm going to take one of those and then we need to replace that with a new one. Swift plus one damage plus one speed. Nice but I think I'm going to take another one of those and when we put this into here okay now I need to just choose which cards I'm going to replace in my hand with those well to me this is pretty simple um, I have this draw one this allows me to draw two and discard one that I don't want so I'm definitely going to swap one of those for that let's see if I've got another one of those because that would be an easy choice I have. I'm basically getting an upgrade on that card. So I've got the same functionality but an improvement on it. So that was an that was an easy choice. Just make sure I've still got 12. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Yes I have. Okay. What's that? Get rid of the poison. Restore full health okay we will oh we need to move the time on <laughs> always got to remember all these different things right remove the, uh, the time on and that's hit a reset which means a new scourge beast will appear there um, no change anywhere else okay I will respawn do you know what I need to kill another Scourge Beast, don't I? So I'm going to respawn right here. 
so that I can uh, get myself into there and attack that beast. Let's have a look at the cards I've got this time. Okay, I'm going to use this card to move. Oh, hang on. Let's choose which side I want to be on first. I'm going to start on this side. I'm going to use my... Yeah, I'm going to put this on the, uh, the quick cut. Right, and now I'm going to move this dodge card. I'm going to discard that so that I can move one Two, I can't make it all the way into the space with the Scourge Beast, but you know what? I don't want to. I will end my go there, and the Scourge Beast will move in. Good news for me. Takes two damage straight away. Now, um, he will attack me, and I will use this quick cut with the extra damage, so that'll be two damage, that'll be enough to kill it. Now when I play this card, it says I can draw two, so I've got a stagger and a stagger. Okay, well that's easy enough. Discard one. So I've now got these two cards. Let's see what he's going to do. He is going to do a basic. It's going to be basic attack. It's a speed three for two damage. Mine is also a speed three for two damage, so we're both going to suffer the two damage, unless I could dodge. Ah, I have got a dodge. I can play this card into here to dodge. I get to draw a card and clear the space. Oh. There we go, I've now got this card in my hand. And he's dead. So I've dodged him, and he's taken a two more damage. Goodbye, Mr. Scourge Beast. I get another corpse token. Oh, I forgot to put the other one next to him. There we go. So we've got our two corpse tokens. Get my first blood echo. And now I need to get those two corpses to the graveyard in order to get them on this card so that I can reveal the next part of the main mission. I also need to decide if I'm going to try and do Yosefka's research insight mission. Right, let's get moving. We're going to move two with this card. One, two. Move the tokens along. We're going to move another two with this card. One, two. That's as close as I can get to the graveyard this go. The monsters will now activate. They will move one towards me. They will move one towards me. It's the end of their turn. Move the timer on. Three cards. Let's see what we've got. On this turn, I'm going to use this to refresh my firearm. like so. I'm going to move into this tile with my two corpses. It doesn't say anything about when you can use those corpse tokens in the graveyard to put them onto the card. It doesn't say that there can't be a monster there, it doesn't say you have to interact. So before I forget I'm going to simply move those both to that card. Okay and as I've moved it to that card it says I should now read card 19 source of the scourge. Now that we have suitable bait, setting a trap for these instinctive beasts will be easy enough. As we prepare, we should also investigate the havens across the district where the common folk gather during nights of the hunt to see just how far the infection has spread through central Yarnum. When the hunters have collected at least two insight, this chapter reveal card 20. Okay, we've got one insight. We obviously need another the only other one we're aware of at the moment is the Yosefka's research option. 
which we may or may not do. I haven't done that one before, so it might be interesting. I'm going to discard this card because I can use it to move for three. So I've moved in for one, dropped my tokens. Now I'm going to move out and they will pursue. Now it's interesting, if I move out, do they pursue as I'm moving or do they pursue, will they pursue again? I'm going to assume that it's just one pursue. So I'm going one, two, and then I move off this tile. So both of these will pursue. And at this point, I am going to let them come to me. So I'm going to end my turn there. Now both of these are going to activate. They're going to move one. Now both of them are going to suffer minus one to speed while they're in here with me. Uh, I suppose I should sort of nominate one of them. Let's just say one on the left goes first, then the one on the right. So this one goes first, then that one. This one has moved in, so we'll trigger my rifle and take two damage straight away. We'll say that that left hand one is going to attack first. I'm going to use slash because they're going one slower. So this could be enough to finish off that uh, that second hunter's mob. Let's see what it is. It's the hunter's mob special. Well, the hunter's mob special is the rifle shot at speed one. I'll just remind everybody. Rifle shot, speed one, four damage and stun. However, luckily for me, Mine is, well, I mean, at minus one speed, so it's even slower than slow, but mine is faster and does two damage, and so they will never actually get to finish their killing attack, or their attack anyway, because I will have dispatched them, which gives me another blood echo. Now it's the other Hunter's Mob's turn to attack. This time I'm going to keep this card for a dodge, because I've got my fastest... I've got my fastest slot available, so I'm really hopeful that I should be able to dodge whatever they do. And again, it is a special, which is the rifle shot. So I'm simply going to play my dodge card here, which means no damage at all for me this time. Right. Looks like I'll be making these guys follow me to uh, the clinic and taking them out. I need to move the time on one. I need to renew my hand. One, two, three cards. Okay. Well, I, I'm going to have to do something. Oh, okay. Technically, this dodge, I can clear this space. I think I'm going to have to expend card to turn this over. So these two cards will also be expended. Turn this over. Come on, flip. Like so. I get to choose where I want to put this. Uh, again, it seems like an obvious choice to me. It's going to go on the quick cut. Now I need to... I need to draw them away from me. So that I can kill them when we get into the clinic space. Yeah, I want to weaken this guy before he gets into um, the clinic with me. Everything's a speed minus one while we're still in the Odin Chapel. So I think what I'd actually prefer to do is attack him first with a slash, because we can do two damage with this card next. So we we attack with the slash, we're going to clear the slot afterwards. Let's see what he does with that. He does a basic. His basic is a speed 2. So I could, I could, no I can't dodge it because I haven't got a dodge card, I've just used it for that. But that's fine. We'll take the 2 damage, I'm happy with that. And we will give our 2 damage straight to the mob. Then we will use our last card to move to, uh, also I clear that slot of course, must remember that, so we will move one, two, and now he, I left the tile so he's going to pursue, he, <laughs> I left the tile so they will pursue, and then that's the end of my turn, 
they will then activate, which is one, and they're going to attack. I've got nothing to defend myself with, so I'm just going to have to hope that there's nothing too bad here. It is their ability. Oh dear, I do hope this hasn't backfired on me for being... At that speed, before Hunter's attack, so, well, there is no attack from me, so that doesn't matter. Move the Hunter's mob one space away. Okay. All Hunters in the space it left must then dodge or suffer three damage. Well, I can't dodge, so I am going to suffer three damage. Now, this is... This is not great. Um, I wanted them in that space to finish them off there as well. So I'm going to have to move the time on. I need to shuffle my deck. Put those cards back. I've got one, two, three. Oh, we'll just use this card. Discard this. So we move one and we move back. They're going to follow me back. Now, I just need to finish them off with two damage. I will use this in Quick Cut, which will do two damage, because we have the Bloodstone Shard. I get to draw two cards. Let's have a look at the two cards I draw. And then I discard one. Well, I think I'm going to have to discard that one. I've got these two. Both of them are dodges. Uh, now, I've done my attack to them at speed 3. Let's see what they do to me. Basic. This is great. Their basic is a speed 2. I'm at speed 3 with 2 damage. I've only got 1 health but it doesn't matter because I've killed them. Take them off the board. Get rid of their blood tokens. I get a blood echo. And you'll notice we've killed them on Yosefa's clinic. So, what did it say? It said, so slay a hunter mob or huntsman's minion while it is on the Yosefka's clinic tile and reveal card 25. Insight mission. Yosefka's research. You knock on the heavy wooden door. After a moment you hear Yosefka. You have brought me samples? Immensely useful. Perhaps you can be of further use. I require the still warm blood of one of those beasts. Lure one here, strike it down, and I'll handle the rest. As you leave, you can't help but feel an underlying ruthlessness has replaced the compassion in her tone. Reveal card 27. And we're going to complete this mission by slaying a scourge beast while it is on Yosefka's clinic tiles. Insight mission. Shelter at Yosefka's clinic. Hunter. I would ask one other task of you. Should you find any survivors out there, send them here, and I swear on my Hippocratic Oath I will protect them. Perhaps even cure them. And reward you for your efforts, of course. Hunters also gain one survivor token when they pick up consumables from a uh, chest space. These tokens are lost if the hunter teleports or goes to the dream. Hunters ending a move on Yosefka's clinic tile place their held tokens on this card. Complete this mission when that's the symbol for the number of hunters, which is one plus one. So two tokens have been placed on this card. And reveal card 28. So it's, it's really, we've got another insight mission now. So I don't actually need to do all of these. I just have to decide which one would be easiest. I think probably the easiest is to get a scourge beast. We need to make our way back. I feel at this point still our go. Everything's going to reset so I feel the most useful thing we can do is probably return to the dream make sure we get maximum upgrades and restore our health and everything else so let's do that. He will disappear back to the dream. I'll bring this over here so that we can see our options together. Okay We've got three tokens this time, which is excellent. That's the most uh, most I've ever had when I come back to the dream. So what should we get? I think we could have something nice like this, which is just going to give us a block of two. Yeah, I quite like the idea of that. So we'll take that. That's one of our tokens gone. Let's replace that upgrade slot with this. 
then I think we'll take the swift with the token gone and then we place the card in that slot oh I've got to have that heal two after an attack that's great okay now we need to put a card back in that slot now we will reset our firearm we will put our health back up we've used if you notice uh, we need to shuffle those okay we used our last token we need to reset our rune card okay and we obviously need to choose which three cards we're going to discard right let's have a look what we're dealing with here we have got we've got three basic stagger cards and three basic dodge clear this slot cards you can see that obviously these are the ones I've enjoyed keeping the most with this character but I certainly don't think that we need to keep those now one thing I would say straight away is that the reason stagger is so useful to us is we get plus one but with this we're getting plus one and a speed increase so that's one of our staggers gone and we will keep that upgrade card now let's have a look at what we got next next we've got this block two well I think I tend to use this card more on one side than the other anyway so again I think I'm going to get rid of another stagger to keep that block and then here we have plus one damage after attack heal two so this is this is really the same thing why would I keep a stagger when I can get the plus one from this anyway and heal two I mean stagger is useful but I'd rather have the dodges so we now have our new 12 cards okay right we move the clock on because we come to the dream everything resets we need a scourge beast we need a hunter's mob and we need a hunter's mob over there now i am going to respawn yeah i'm going to respawn on this lantern here I'm going to try and lure this Scourge Beast, which should be quite easy because Scourge Beasts move two spaces. So, right, where do I want to... I've seen my three cards now, so I'm going to choose... I don't want to kill it too quickly. I think, I think we'll do this. We'll put this damage one of these quick cut positions so I think I'm gonna to have to discard this one to move two one two I'm now on the same town as the scourge beast now I can use this one to move two one two and the scourge beast being a scourge beast uh, will pursue one because I left the tile and then two because it's a scourge beast in fact I need to stop here don't I it will pursue me like so now that it's on this tile I, will, I can use this to attack its speed is slowed by one I will do more damage with this as well so I basically stick this on here we're going to go for th this will be three damage if we get this and let's see what the scourge beast does it does its special which is a quick swipe which is normally a speed 3 but it's actually a speed 2 this time I'm doing 2 damage and do you know what I don't see any reason to take that damage I will you'll notice I'm not discharging my rifle by the way because I'm keeping that now for, for later I will dodge drawing a card clearing that slot so I take no damage from him and he is going to take full three damage from me one two three and I still have 
this card which I'm going to use to move two, one, two. I've moved off the tile so the scourge piece will follow me, one, two. So the scourge piece follows me in pursuing on two and this time I will let my rifle discharge I only need one to, to kill him but you know what doesn't matter so he is dead take him off the board and I get a blood echo now if we remember the mission said Complete this mission by slaying a scourge piece while it is on the Osefka's clinic tile. Well, we've done that. Reveal card 26. Card 26. Osefka's research. Distribute one consumable. Okay. We have the bold hunter's mark. Hunter turn. Teleport your hunter to any space. Okay. We'll put that there. We already have the hand lantern, which does the same thing, but never mind. Um, and we also get... Yosefka's Blood Vial, which is a reward card, so let's find that. There it is. You go to Blood Turn. During the Hunter's turn, you can heal too. The product of a careful refinement process, this Blood Vial appears to be a clinic original. Okay, so we'll put that. Now, ah, now we have to decide. Obviously, I'm consumable. I can keep. Oh no, we don't have to decide. Sorry, I've only got two tools. That's a consumable. So, just put those there. What else does it say now? So we've distributed the rewards. Yosefka has researched the effects of the beast plague. Invaluable information that we can put to use. More so, she has synthesized her own form of refined healing blood. She could prove to be quite useful in the hunts to come. That is the end of that insight mission. Okay, we've completed two missions. What did the card say? When hunters have collected at least two insight this chapter, reveal card 20. Source of the scourge. From deep in the district, a piercing screech rends the night air. This is not the familiar roar of a scourge beast. With a loud crash, a monstrous figure lands upon our corpse-laden trap. Surround the graveyard tower with fog gates. Okay. okay, we only need two because there's only two doorways in. There we go. Uh, when you put the fog gates on, we're going to remove that. And spawn the cleric beast. Now, this is a lovely miniature, this. Again, I'm looking forward to, to painting this. Let me just bring it here so you can see. There we go. Quite impressive. I think it's the biggest miniature that you get with the base game. Right, so the Scourge Beast goes into the graveyard. Right, what else do we need? Uh, it's not a, sorry, the Cleric Beast. Now the Cleric Beast is different to the other things we've seen so far. The Cleric Beast is a proper um, boss, a proper boss battle. So when we're dealing with the Cleric Beast, it actually has its own card. Cleric Beast has its own card. Two phases, phase one. Phase two. The only real difference here is the the health that it uh, starts with. So it will start phase one, and it will start because there's only one hunter. It will start with ten health. So we put that on there, and I will put I'll put the ten health on it. I'll do it the same way as you would do it with a hunter. In other words, I'll take it away until it's all gone. Okay. So there's our ten health. Also, instead of using these activation cards it will use dedicated deck of phase one cards and phase two cards so um, these are already shuffled so you know put those here uh, well where can you see them let me just find a place where we can use them let's move the enemy activation cards out of the way for now I'll keep them exactly as they are and we'll put those there that's our turn finished, we've got no more cards, we've moved everything, we've done the missions, 
Now we need to move the time on again. I need to draw three new cards and I'm going to have to make my way up there I guess to take care of this big guy. Which uh, should be fun. First time for a boss battle. I will use the oh, hand lantern which allows me to tele teleport to any uh, lamp space on the board so we put it the other way up so we know we've used it and I will use that to teleport all the way to a central lamp I will then use this basic dodge card to move two one two at this point I will stop and let the cleric beast move into its turn so the cleric beast will activate move one and then it will attack me and I think for this I'm going to assume, hope, don't know what the right term is but I'm going to put this card down here because that's going to be even faster than a quick because I've got the plus one arrow and then we'll see what the scourge beast will do so lunging swipe oh nice cannot be dodged okay that's great um, lunging swipe at speed 2 so my, my strike is going to hit first that's that's nice so I can take off the two I can take off two health after this attack move cleric beast one space away before this attack the hunter may exhaust their firearm to place one insight token on the cleric beast card this attack deals minus one per insight token I don't have uh, the ability to do anything with my rifle it's already extinguished um, after the attack move the one space so it's going to move one space away but uh, I also need to take the four damage of course because it cannot be dodged that seems a bit unfortunate but that's the rules okay pop that there um, right I need to move this on again I have only got two health that's not a great position to be in let's draw my two cards and see what they are I can use this when used for non-attack heal two so if I put that down and move I can move into his space healing two I can also expend the blood vial turn it over so I know we've used it to heal another two which brings me back up to maximum health now I will attack oh, now this is a good question will I attack yes I will attack doesn't matter which one I use they're, they're both the same so I will attack and clear the space straight afterwards let's see what he does to grab at speed three okay well that's faster than me so he's going to do three damage and I am going to do nothing because I got it's got stagger I do get to clear the slot though so at least I get to use it again but he does three damage to me one two three pop that down there well I'm really not sure exactly what I'm going to do now so Bear in mind he's going to attack me. I think I'm just going to keep this card and let him have his activation. So he's going to activate, doesn't need to move. He's going to attack with recovery. Removing all insight tokens on the Cleric Beast card. Block two from the Hunter's attack. Shuffle the beast. So, so that's good. No damage for me. No damage for him, of course, but that's okay. Move the time on. Bring my hand back up to three cards. 
And I think I'll attack with this. Tireless. Allows me to draw two cards. There's one card, which is another draw two. But I've run out of cards, so I'm going to have to uh, mix the pack that's remaining. Put it there. Right, so I get to draw another card. So I've drawn two and then discard one card. I will discard that card. Okay, uh, well I've attacked at that speed. Let's see what he is going to do. Overhead slam. Well, we've both done the same speed, so we're both going to take the damage. Targets all hunters in this space before this attack. One of the, yeah, well, I've, my firearm can't be used. So I'm going to take four damage. That's going to kill me, but he is also going to take two damage. So that's another two off him. So we're making some progress. Unfortunately, I'm dead. Now, notice I have got the Carol Rune Moon, which means I keep one Blood Echo, which is lovely. So I'm going to come out of there into the Hunter's Dream. Okay, so we will reset our uh, cards that we used. We get to keep one Blood Echo, which is lovely. So we get to, I think we're going to take the dodge. I think that one's going to be the most use for us. Well, same, almost the same sort of thing. No, no dodge on that one. Right. Let's put my health back up. Let's recharge the rifle. I'm going to swap this basic card with a dodge crystal for this one, which is basically an, up an upgrade, really. It's got a dodge the same, it's got a clear the slot the same, it just adds in the stagger as well. So we'll get rid of that basic card, which means we've now got our 12. Let's bear in mind we have had to return to the Hunter's Dream, which means that that had to move on one. This is now a reset. The Cleric Beast, well, well, it's already on that space, but if I understand the rules correctly, it will now go back to its 10 health. So all of the progress we've made has been lost, but that's, that's the way it is. Uh, I'm going to put this on, let's try and do a bit more damage. So I'm gonna put it on this side and I'm going to put it on the heavy carve so we could potentially do four damage. Although, I am going to check what my cards are actually before I make that final decision. But yeah, I'm happy with that. Okay. So we put it on the heavy carve. I need to respawn my character. So now we need to move this on once more. Put him there on the central lamp. We've got to respawn here. And that's all the monsters respawned. Okay, we are good to go again. I'll expend that move. One, two. I'll stop there and let the cleric beast come to me. He's going to attack. I am going to put this in here. We'll see what happens. Um, ah, he'll take two damage because of my rifle. So the three, there we go. I'll keep this, see if I can dodge. I don't know what he's gonna do, but we will see. Overhead slam, speed two, four damage. Targets all hunters in the space. Okay, so it's a speed two. I'm definitely going to dodge that. So I can dodge it just using quick cut and then I also get to clear the space. So I won't take damage from his attack, but he will take three, four, five damage from me. That's probably the best I ever thought I would get. And now it's my turn again. 
I don't see how I can possibly win this because we are um, so close to the end of time and the last thing is a respawn so I, I don't know what's going to happen here but it doesn't look good let's put it that way um, I'm going to use this rune to refresh my firearm I'm going to take my three cards one two three how much damage do I need to do right I'm going to attack for two allows me to draw a card and also to clear this slot afterwards drawn I keep getting these cards I'm not I'm not sure now why I got them because I'm not sure I really like those what's he gonna do let's see he's gonna do a lunging swipe his lunging swipe is speed 2 but it says it cannot be dodged so no point worrying about that after this attack, move Cleric Beast one space away. Before this attack, the Hunter may exhaust their firearm to place one Insight token on Cleric Beast card. This attack deals minus one per Insight token. Really not worth me losing two damage on him by, by just saving one. So it's slow. It's the same speed as mine. He's going to suffer two from me. I get to clear this slot though. I can't dodge it. So... I'm going to suffer four from him. That's not very nice, but there we go. But he is going to suffer two from me. He's now down to his last one. And at this point, I really, really have to just do this and hope. So I play this card to quick cut. I get to draw two cards. And then... Oh, come on. And then I have to discard one. I'm going to have to keep this one. I'm hoping I get a chance to move and actually heal. So, yep, I have to get rid of that one. Okay, so I keep that. Now, I just need to do one damage. So, yeah, just need to do one damage. Let's just hope that this is, that this is the one. Ah, it's still in my turn. I can use the blood vial to heal two. Yeah, I'll do this. Draw two cards. There's two. I have to discard one. I'll discard that one. All right, let's see what happens. My slash for two against his grab at three. Oh no it's got stagger so he's faster than me he does three damage and because he's faster my attack isn't going to do anything to him okay that's a shame and the last thing I'm going to do because I'm almost out of time to do anything I'm going to use my second wind to flip this over like so and put that there and I will I just need to do one damage so I'll just do that a quick um, a quick one there and I get to clear the slot afterwards which is nice so let's see what he does recovery Remove all inside, and there are no inside tokens. Block two from the hunter's attack, shuffle the clip. Well, so he's not going to take any damage, so that's a shame. Okay, put that there. Now this is the bit that I, I think is, is kind of slightly crazy. I get a reset now, because we are at the end of the, at the, end of the, the mission. I'm not sure how they actually expect anybody to, to finish this beast off at this point. Um, because if I, if I understand this right, he's going to move back to there. And he's going to get all of his health back. Which is um, more than a little bit frustrating. Yes, I, uh, I don't see much hope for us. We've put the, the boss card, we've put the health back up to 10. We are at the very end of the, the mission and I, I was unable to get rid of the 10 damage. 
with more than done a couple of turns to try and all I have left now is this one card which I will put here um, leaping so I can make a move and then attack so I will move into the space with an attack for the slash Cleric Beast will do an overhead slam so I will land my two damage uh, three damage sorry so he will go down to seven but I uh, will take four I only have one health so I am gone dead finished and there is no time left no time left to try again that is incredibly difficult um, I've no idea what happened. I mean, we're not even close to, to harming this thing. It doesn't seem to me impossible. I mean, I think it would have been impossible for me to get him down in this game. But I don't think it's impossible necessarily to, to kill, you know, to get down and flip it to the other side and, and carry on. But not when you have a, a, a reset here and then another reset at the very end. I think that is, um, well... I guess it must be possible, it must have been play tested, but wow, talk about difficult. So, uh, we've lost the game. How sad. Um, I think we followed the rules, I think we followed the rules correctly this time with a little bit of guidance from the comments from the people and with me taking a little bit more time to read things carefully. I don't think I missed any um, activations landing on spaces. Uh, I think we've done everything correctly. If anybody spots anything, do let me know. And I did note at the end of my first video, if any of you actually had the perseverance to get to the end of it, you'll have noticed I added a, a small bit at the end just saying I made a mistake and I didn't move the time counter on. I actually um, realised watching it back, I did move the time counter on, so I did actually finish that mission successfully. If you've made it this far again, it's not a short video, but I, again, I hope that's been useful. I'm going to have to reset and go back. I made a note of everything I'd got at the end of the first chapter, so I'm not going to go back and do the first chapter again. I'm going to have another go at this. I may or may not film it. You know, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. It depends on how it goes, but um, thank you for your time. I hope you all stay well, and I will talk to you again soon.